first story. OP abandoned their daughter and wife for a new lover. Now she left OP for another man. A week ago, my wife Marie told me she fell in love with another man. It was so unexpected, and I didn't see this coming. She was the person who taught me what it is like to be in love. I was married to a woman Amanda who I loved, but wasn't in love with. I was with my ex-wife for eight years. We got together when I was twenty. We have a kid who is turning five on Thanksgiving. When I met Marie, I was married and happy, and she had a fiancé. Marie threw a wrench in that. We formed a connection I never thought possible. I could talk to Marie for hours all day. She was extremely beautiful the best-looking woman I had ever been with. One of the hardest things to do was tell Amanda that I was in love with another woman. It crushed her. She refused to sign the divorce papers and demanded we go to therapy. Eventually she gave in, but it was hard to see a woman I still care for in so much pain. She doesn't talk to me unless it's about our kid, and that hurts. But I did all that for Marie. I even moved across the country from Virginia to Seattle because Marie wanted to be on the West Coast. I don't get to see my little girl as much as I want because she's still in Virginia. Despite all that, she left. We had a great marriage, and I did so much to keep her happy, but it wasn't enough. There was no warning last week. I found out she's leaving. I'm depressed, and I've just been lying in bed. I don't know what to do. Edit. Typos. Edit 2. I am still involved in my daughter's life, because of the hateful comments criticizing my parental decisions. I call her just about every day. Edit 3. I never cheated on Amanda. I broke things off before I did anything romantic with Marie, because I respected Amanda too much. I still care for her. She was my friend, and is still the mother of my child. Relevant comments. By Tiffagrom. Unfortunately, cheaters cheat. Now you know what you put Amanda through. I'm sorry for your pain, but let it guide you to better choices in the future. OP. Yeah. I had no idea she was that type of person. We both made sure to end things with our significant others before pursuing anything romantic. Unfortunately, she's been having an affair with this guy for two months now. She couldn't even give me the respect to end things with me first. OP. So if you fell in love with someone else and realized you were never in love with your significant other, would you just ignore it? Flimsy prize 1D150. Well, you put yourself in a position to fall in love with someone else. But if I put myself in this spot, I would go to couples therapy to understand why or how I got to that point and figure out how to co-parent. If you had done therapy, you may have figured out how you let yourself be in an emotional affair without even realizing it. You might want to do some research into loneliness, talk to a therapist, and decide whether or not you were ever really in love with Marie. You changed the trajectory of your life and your ex-wife's, your child's and Marie's fiancé's lives for a woman who is apparently a serial cheater. Did you ever question why she wanted to live on the West Coast? I wonder if it was to control or limit your interactions with your ex and daughter. OP. I still wouldn't call it an emotional affair. But Amanda really wanted to do therapy when I told her to try to make things work. I go back and forth because, when I told her, she thought it was something she did. She kept asking what she did to make me unhappy, but it was nothing. She was a great girlfriend, wife and mother. Sometimes I wonder if, if I just tried therapy, the very least would still be friends. It hurt her a lot that I didn't fight for our marriage. Once she realized I wasn't budging and wasn't willing to try anything, she became cold to this day. I want my friend back. Update. I'm starting to finally heal. I probably won't date for a long time, but I'm starting to hang out with my friends more. I was very depressed for a month, and I still am. I've tried to rekindle my friendship with Amanda, but she's not interested. She told me she still loves me even after everything, and she wishes she didn't. That hurt. She told me how I felt about Marie and how she felt when I left her. I reassured her that it wasn't her, it was me, and that Marie brought out something that I had never felt before. I told her she was a great wife, and she would find someone who loved her the way I loved Marie. Even after all that, she told me she doesn't want to talk to me unless it's about her daughter, and she has ironically been more cold. The good news is that I started a new hobby. Roller skating. We formed this amateur team, and the people there are really amazing. I have been keeping myself busy by doing all sorts of activities. Relevant comments. Slabby punch. There's nothing ironic about her coldness. You're acting like it doesn't make sense. It does. You don't give a single, solitary SHT about Amanda. You're just lonely and trying to convince her to let you use her until the next Marie comes along. Thankfully, you're the dumbbars in this conversation. You showed your arse, and she was smart enough to give it a great big kick. Your ex-wife is not a stand-in for the star of your romantic life. She's your ex. She doesn't even remotely care that you're lonely, and she shouldn't. 
She has her own life to live. OP. Here we go again. As I explained before, I do care about Amanda. More than anything, she was my friend. I knew her for a long time. I tried to stay friends with her following our divorce. This isn't a new thing. She is the one who rejected my friendship for years. I completely understand why, but I didn't just decide out of the blue that I wanted to be friends. She knows I want to be friends with her, but the ball is in her court and has been the entire time. Update. How long after a divorce will you start dating again? I'm going through a really bad divorce where my wife cheated, and me and I planned on staying single for a while. The thing is, I'm starting to develop a crush on this person I go bowling with. I was depressed and started doing activities to keep myself busy. It was the first time I started having feelings for someone else. What's holding me back is that I still love my ex. I got a new job and will be moving from Seattle to Phoenix soon. Update. My ex-wife is dating again, even though she's still in love with me. How do I show her that's a bad idea? I'll try to condense this as much as possible. I was with my first wife, Amanda, for eight years and have a beautiful daughter. Unfortunately, during our marriage, I fell in love with someone else. That woman ended up cheating on me and leaving me. I tried to maintain a friendship with Amanda because, even though I realized I didn't love her, she was still my friend. Anyway, I was talking to a mutual friend, and she told me Amanda put herself out there and went on a date, and she has been talking to this guy. After we got off the phone, I called Amanda, but she didn't answer. So I texted her. We need to talk. Amanda eventually calls back. And when I ask her about our daughter, our daughter spent the weekend at my parents' house. She tells me she will pick her up in the evening. I told her this was a serious question. I asked her, are you still in love with me? She said, unfortunately, with an attitude. I said then, why would you think it's a good idea to date right now? She got angry and said that was none of my business. I told her I'm coming to you as a friend. Dating while still in love with me is not going to help. She said her therapist said it's time to put herself out there. I told her that her therapist sounded like a horrible therapist. She told me to shut up. She said, Do you know how much this impacted me? She said I loved you and always tried to be a great wife for you. And that wasn't good enough. I interrupted her on the phone and just said, Amanda. I then told her that I get it when Marie left, my second wife. And I couldn't even finish my sentence before she said, You're a effing prick. She hung up and blocked me on Facebook. I don't know. I'm trying to look out for her because she is the mother of my child. But, update. I apologized. And this was her response. Is her request fair? I copied and pasted her email response back. I appreciate your apology. I have a lot to say. I can't stand talking to you anymore. I've already spoken to your parents, and they agreed that all communication should go through them. I've said multiple times that I only want to talk if it's about our child, and you refuse to respect that. I don't think you realize or care but your behavior since that person left you has been nothing short of disrespectful. The impact this has had on my mental health has been insane. Even though you don't care and don't tell me you do. Saying you care doesn't mean anything, I'm going to try to explain it to you. I've tried to explain this to you multiple times, but you always turn it back on yourself. I love you. I wish I didn't, and I don't know why. You were the love of my life. As dumb as it is, I wish you were still my husband. Every time I talk to you, it's a reminder of the life that I lost. Please, going forward, if you actually care about me, respect my boundaries. As hard as it was when that person left you, imagine if you had a child with her and had to talk to her every day as she explains that you couldn't make her happy, but this other man can. I'm not sure how to respond. I took everyone's advice, but I'm kind of hurt. My parents went behind my back and basically agreed to act as a liaison of communication for us. Without talking to me. I'm trying to respect her boundaries, but what about being able to talk to my daughter? Because she blocked me from the phone, I haven't been able to talk to my daughter. It's already hard living so far and not being able to see my beautiful girl as much as I would like. I want to respect the boundaries she's placing, but I can't agree to anything that will make me talk to my daughter less. Update. My ex-wife's infidelity has caused me not to trust anyone. I didn't realize it until last night. I just moved to a new place, and my neighbor was taking me to drinks. And she said, you don't open up much, do you? I hope I can go back to the old me, but my ex-wife took something from me. I was more vulnerable to her than any other woman, including my first wife. She taught me what love is. I made so many sacrifices for that woman, and she still cheated. I have been keeping myself busy, as it hasn't even been six months since it happened. But when I make new friends like my neighbor, it's hard to let my guard down. I just wanted to ask her, why are you so nice? What's your end goal? 
I didn't do that, obviously. But I missed the old me. Update. Self-reflection and misconceptions. I've been taking in a lot of people's comments. And I have a lot to say. Most of the comments have been mean and hurtful. That being said, I decided to use it to self-reflect and grow. Some common things I learned. People feel like I'm not taking accountability for what happened to Amanda. I want people to know I take full responsibility. I have to learn that even though my intentions were in the right place, that doesn't change the hurt. People think I want Amanda back, which is not true. I want people to know that I do empathize with what happened. I care about her and want her to find someone. I just don't think it's healthy to date while in love with someone else. People think I abandoned my daughter. It's not true. I'm doing my best to be in her life. Still, I do take accountability for the pain I unintentionally caused Amanda. I still care about her and want what's best for her. I fell in love with another woman, and I wish I hadn't. I was horrified when it happened. Right now, I just need someone in my corner. I need comfort and to heal. I hope this clears up any misconceptions. Before you comment on my post, understand that I take full responsibility, and I'm looking for ways to grow as a person. I can't be the father I want with my mental health in the gutter, and that is why I need comfort and to do things to help get me out of this depression. Second story. OP is worried that her husband's comments to her sister may have driven her away. I'm worried that my husband's comments to my sister 25 may have driven her away. I've known my husband for six years and been married for one. I moved across the country for college when I was 18, where I met my husband 25. I've only been back a couple of times over the years, mostly for holidays, but my husband had never gone back with me until we ended up moving back to be closer to my family. Since we've been back, I've been trying to get closer to my family, especially my sister. She was in some bad relationships and cut off contact with me and my parents for a few years. But she's back now, and I had hoped that we'd be able to build a relationship. I had noticed that she'd not been coming over to my place as much, not spending as much time with the family. And then a few weekends ago, she asked me if we could talk. She said that she felt that she wanted to let me know that my husband had been making comments and saying things to her that she thought were inappropriate. My sister is gorgeous beyond beautiful, and she's always attracted attention even from married men. My husband had been making comments about her body and her looks compliments, but ones that made her feel uncomfortable. During Christmas, he told her how attractive she was and some stuff about how lucky her boyfriend was. Since then, she's been trying to not be around him as much by not coming around as much, and I was afraid of how I was going to react if I found out. I was obviously really upset, but I told her that I understood, that it wasn't her fault, and that it wouldn't happen again. My husband and I ended up in a fight when I confronted him about what she had told me. But eventually, he admitted that he'd said most of that stuff to her, even though he tried to pass it off like he didn't mean anything by it. I made it clear that he wasn't to say anything like what he'd said to her again, and that he'd apologize for his inappropriateness. He agreed with everything I asked of him. I let her know about my conversation with my husband, and that he'd apologize whenever she felt like hearing it. But she's still not been coming around to family events. I'm so scared that his comments have driven a wedge between my sister and the rest of us. She and I hadn't talked for a long time until I moved back, and I've been scared that something is going to make her want to leave again. Comments. Alicine Rivers. Everyone is telling you that your husband is a creep. Stop defending him, and let that sink in. He is married to you, and still openly hits on your sister. You have to know if he's SHTing this close to where he eats. It's not the first time. Take the blinders off already. Deleted. Why are you not more concerned with your husband wanting to F your sister? OP, I am. Believe me. I was crying for days when I found out. But right now, I'm just scared of losing my sister because of my husband. And I don't know how to fix it. Deleted. If I were her, I would see you as inextricably tied to him as long as you're married to him. I'd imagine the knowledge that you stay with him despite. This won't exactly make your sister trust you. OP. That's what I'm afraid of. And I don't know what to do about it is splitting up with my husband. The only way to keep my relationship with my sister. Rug crammer. Your husband wants to F your sister. If he had the chance to use his advantage, you'd have been split long ago. Judgment. NTA. Update. Twelve days later. I was honestly so surprised by the number of responses that my original post garnered. I tried to read everyone's thoughts. And I just want to say that I am really grateful to everyone who offered some perspective and took the time to share their thoughts even if they were upset with the fact that I was handling everything in the wrong way. I wanted to update anyone who is interested in the state of everything right now. I feel I'm still going to be making people upset and angry. But I'm still trying to work out all that has happened in the last few weeks, 
and I'm hoping that I can eventually wrap my head around the situation and make better choices. One of the things that many people have said is that my husband may have said or done more than my sister had told me, that she's feeling unsafe, and that I've betrayed her. This thought is what has gotten to me the most, and it's been weighing on my shoulders. I'm struggling very hard with what to do next. The main update I have is that my sister and I have been talking. She hadn't been responding to most of my messages and calls since the last time that we had spoken in person, which is when I told her what I talked about with my husband. The last message I sent her was one that asked if she wanted to get lunch, which was the day before I posted. She ended up answering that one a couple of days after the post and agreed to have lunch with me. When we met up, she acted very normal. She seemed very much like her usual self very bubbly and outgoing. I honestly can't tell if she's actually more upset and bothered than she's appearing. Her birthday is coming up at the end of this month, and she wants to have a girl's trip or weekend away, and she wants my help planning everything. She seems excited about that, and as far as I can tell, she is behaving as if everything is fine. I didn't know if I should bring up the situation with my husband, but I ended up asking her about it again. She reiterated what she had told me before. He complimented her on her looks and her outfits in a suggestive way, and she had said the thing about her boyfriend being a lucky man. She said again, that she was mostly concerned with how I was going to feel about it. I didn't ask her if she felt unsafe around him. I feel now like I should have. But at the time, I was still afraid that she didn't trust me and might feel like I was putting her on the spot. During lunch, I asked her what she would think if I left him. She repeated that her main worry before coming to me was causing issues between my husband and me, but told me that she didn't like my husband and didn't think he was a good guy, in general and specifically for me. I'm still worried about her. She feels threatened and afraid of my husband, but right now she's acting okay with me. I'm hoping that if things continue to seem normal, we can continue to talk, and she might open up more. Since that lunch, we've seen each other several times. I made dinner for my mom last Sunday, and she came over to eat with us, and then we did some planning for her birthday. Again, she's still acting as if everything is normal, but I'm still incredibly worried about her. The other thing that happened is that I started sleeping over at my mom's house. My mom has been having health and mobility issues that have made it difficult for her to do a lot. I had been trying to do as much as I could for her, but she's been needing someone around more full-time. I'd been so overwhelmed these past few months driving over to her house every day to drop off food and do the things around the house that she needed. I had already been considering finding someone to stay with her until she's back on her feet. After everything that happened, and then what I read in the last post, I talked to her about it. She agreed to let me stay with her in exchange for helping her out more. My mom's extra bedrooms are used as storage, so I had to spend last weekend uncluttering a place to sleep. But one of my sister's friends came over to help me clear out the room, and I've been staying here since then. My husband figured out what I was doing and asked if it was because of what had happened with my sister. I told him that I wasn't lying about wanting to help my mom more, but that it was part of it. He was pretty upset, but he eventually let go. Right now. My primary focus has to be on helping my mom and bringing my grades up in grad school, and I've been too anxious and upset over the last few weeks to concentrate, and I can't afford to let my GPA slide. I'm also trying to be available for my sister whenever she wants to talk. Even though things appear to be stable with her right now, I'm still really anxious over what she might be thinking and feeling. It's a lot, and I'm really struggling with figuring out how to balance everything right now. My sister has been really helpful, and so has her friend. My sister brought dinner for me and my mom this week, and her friend left some frozen meals for me to heat up when I'm too tired or busy to cook. He's also going to help me get my mom to her doctor's appointments this week. I'm scared to admit that I still don't know what to do about my husband. I got so many messages and DMs from people who were upset that I hadn't left him yet. But I'm still just feeling too overwhelmed to really come to terms with everything. I'm just trying to get through next month. I've got midterms and my sister's birthday. And then I feel like I can take a breath and take some time to figure out what to do about my relationship. It's very hard to think clearly right now, and I hope that the space between my husband and me is going to help and not hinder that. My husband is extremely upset. He's been calling and texting night and day with all the same questions that I couldn't answer in my last post, and I feel bad that I don't have any answers for anyone yet, but unfortunately, I'm still trying to figure it out. Again, I know there are so many people who are going to hate me for this, and I'm sorry but I'm still just trying to wrap my mind around everything. Comments. Adventurous Basis 280. A big change can be scary, but honestly, if your husband feels comfortable making those types of comments to your sister, then probably it is the tip of the iceberg. I think you are making the right moves. 
It is also to take your time. You don't have to rush to leave him and set things on fire. Sometimes people just need time to process, plan and execute, and that is okay. You are showing support for your sister and your mom and putting your husband on notice. None of those things are small things. Be proud. Update. I wasn't planning on making another update post, but I got a couple of comments and messages today, so I wanted to put out my final update. My husband and I are going to be splitting up. Like I said in my other update, I went ahead and moved in with my mom to take care of her for a few months, hoping that time apart would give me some clarity about everything. And like I said in the previous post, my husband really didn't like that at all. We've probably fought more over the past month than we have in our entire marriage. Then, during one of our arguments, he ended up saying some awful, nasty things about my sister. And at that point, I didn't want to go any further with him or the relationship. I'm still at a loss for what to do next. One of my sister's friends got me in touch with a lawyer, and it's been overwhelming. I've still got my mother in grad school and my job, so with divorce on the docket, I'm just trying to keep my head above water right now. Also, I just wanted to say thank you to the people who gave me encouragement and wanted to give me some genuine guidance. This Nibakai, I'm sorry you're going through this, but I'm happy to see this update. I don't think you'd ever have been able to look at your husband the same way. Divorce is hard. It's messy, it's emotional, and it gets worse before you get better. And it can be embarrassing because you're telling a stranger your attorney everything about your marriage. Lean on your friends and family, and take it one step at a time. One thing I did that helped me was to make a list of things I needed to do, and then cross them off when I finished them. I added to the list all the time, but it made it more manageable. Plus, I could see tangible results when I was despairing about whether or not I was making any progress. You can do this. Ash B13. It's upsetting to me that he could disrespect you all he wanted. You only seemed to care when it was aimed at your sister. It makes me wonder how often you overlooked his poor treatment of you during the course of your relationship. I hope as you heal, you can find a way to be kind to yourself and love yourself more. You deserve it. Best of luck, OP. It will be the most difficult thing you've ever had to do this far, but you will come out the other side far better off than you are now. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, We've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.